Hi, welcome to Ottawa English. I'm Angela, and today we're looking at the speaking section of the Kale test. We're going to be looking at how to describe a graph. When you get to this section of the test, you're going to have a little description that says, your professor shows you an image, describe and explain what you can see, and you will be evaluated on the content of your response, the accuracy of your language, and your ability to reference details in the image. You have one minute to prepare and two minutes to respond. Your preparation time starts on the next page. So at this point, you know that you're going to prepare an academic presentation that describes and explains a visual image. You don't know what that visual image is yet. It may be a pie chart, it may be a table. Today it's going to be a graph. If they're going to evaluate you on the content of your response, you know that they'll be looking at the accuracy of your language and the number of details that you use. You will have one very short minute to prepare and then you will speak for two minutes. And as soon as you go to the next page, that clock starts. So the clock has started. Now you see the picture that you're going to talk about and you read that they want you to answer the question by speaking into the microphone. They tell you that the chart shows the library book borrowing habits of a small village population and that they want you to describe and explain what you see and draw conclusions. So the little bit of content that you already have is that it's about the library book borrowing habits of a small village population. So keep that in your mind. So the presentation that I've prepared looks a little like, or sounds a little like this. The illustration reveals the public library loans made to Clavering's men and women between 2010 and 2013. The years are shown on the horizontal axis, while the number of borrowed books is shown on the vertical axis. Although the number of books that were lent to Clavering's men and women over the three-year period increased, women ultimately overtook men as the most prolific borrowers. Initially, women borrowed only half as many books as their male counterparts. That number rose steadily during the two subsequent years to reach 7,000 books in 2012. At that point, the number of books being lent to women slowed considerably, with only 500 more books being borrowed in the final year. Men's book borrowing stabilised after a rapid rise from 3,000 to 6,500 books in the first year. After 2011, the library's loans to men settled down, neither rising nor falling significantly for the last two years of the period. In conclusion, we can see that the borrowing habits of men and women changed during the time frame, with women replacing men as the primary borrowers of Clavering Library's books. So that's what you're trying to create. And I know it's intimidating if you've got an arts or a language background like I do. But if I can do it, you can do it. Okay? So it takes some practice and we need to work on the structure. But you can get this. So what do we need to do to create that presentation? Well, first of all, we need to have an introduction. Following that, we'll have an overview, and then we'll explain two main ideas and have a conclusion. And in amongst all of that, we'll have some lovely sentence variety that will make it sound like an interesting presentation. So, let's start by looking at the introduction. What do we put in our introduction? Well, essentially, we're looking at the periphery of the table, okay? 
So we know that it's Clavering Public Library. We know the years. Along the horizontal axis, we've got the, the years one by one. And on the vertical axis, we've got the number of books that these people read. So we need to pull that content together in our introduction. So I would say something like this. The illustration reveals the public library loans made to Clavering's men and women between 2010 and 2013. The years are shown on the horizontal axis, while the number of borrowed books is shown on the vertical axis. And that takes care of your introduction, okay? You're really just looking at the periphery. You're not looking at the actual lines at this point. So then we go on to the overview. And the overview is, you can imagine looking at this picture from across the room. You can see that there are two lines and the two lines do something, but you can't see any details. So you're looking at the starting points and the end points, and then whatever intersection that these lines have. So our overview, without any details, is going to say something like this. Although the number of books that were lent to Clavering's men and women over the three-year period increased, women ultimately overtook men as the most prolific borrowers. Okay, so we've got no detail in there at all. We're just talking about what we would be able to see from the other side of the room. Now we go into the main ideas. And in this graph, the easiest way to deal with it is to look at women as one main idea. So we follow the blue line. And then in the second main idea, we'll look at the men. So for the women, we might say, initially, women borrowed only half as many books as their male counterparts. That number rose steadily during the two subsequent years to reach 7,000 books in 2012. At that point, the number of books being lent to women slowed considerably, with only 500 more books being borrowed in the final year. So if you were writing this, you would have this topic sentence, and you still need that when you express your main idea in your presentation. So you want to tell your audience what it is this main idea is going to be about before you start adding all of the details. So we have a topic sentence and we have details, and that takes care of that main idea. So now we go to the men. Uh, same deal, we've got the orange line, and we're going to say, Men's book borrowing stabilized after a rapid rise from 3,000 to 6,500 books in the first year. After 2011, the library's loans to men settled down, neither rising nor falling significantly for the last two years of the period. So again, we've got this topic sentence that tells our audience what the idea is that we're going to develop with our details. So that takes care of the second main idea. And then you make your concluding remarks. So in this case, uh, we're really just going to say what we've already said in a nutshell. So here we go. In conclusion, we can see that the borrowing habits of men and women changed during the time frame, with women replacing men as the borrowing, uh, as the primary borrowers of Clavering Library's books. And so we have our conclusion. In amongst all of this, we're going to have some nice sentence variety. So we've got some fairly conventional comparative forms. We've got lots of conjunctions. We've got lots of participles that give the, the, our language that nice ing flow. We've got several prepositional phrases and some na nice noun phrases. So they're a little bit longer than just using a simple pronoun or a simple noun. So essentially, when we're tackling a graph, we're looking for a nice little introduction, an overview that looks at it 
looks at the picture uh, from the other side of the room with no details. And then we're expressing one main idea and a second main idea and developing those main ideas with details. And then we're offering our conclusion and making sure that we've got lots of sentence variety in there. If you're preparing for kale and you'd like a little help, I can offer you some tutoring. I also run some workshops for specific uh, content and I do writing and speaking correction as well. My number, you can call me or text me at 613-614-6460 or you can contact me through my website, ottawa-english.com. If you're about to take your test, best of luck. Bye-bye.